I should be mad that someone tried to ban you from seeing this practice exam, but I'm also Canadian. We don't know how to get mad, but what we do know how to do is issue the wrongdoer a super passive aggressive apology. Hey, sorry you couldn't get this practice exam banned from YouTube. Better luck next time, eh? We've got all of the skills in this project in column A here, and the first task we're going to do is extend the formula. So if you're ever asked to do that on your test, thank your lucky stars if you get this on your exam because it's so easy. Um, there's already a formula in this cell right here. Usually the instruction would tell you which cell to go to, extend the formula down the table column, click on the autofill handle and just drag it down and drop it to the last cell in our table. And that's how you extend the formula. So for our second task, we'll go to the order amount total worksheet. So it's a different worksheet. That's make sure you're on the right worksheet when you're making changes like this. You don't want to lose marks for something like that. So on the order amount totals worksheet that we've got here, we're going to remove the conditional formatting that exists from the entire worksheet, not just selected cells. So you could just go to this one and remove the conditional formatting. But for our project, we want to remove the conditional formatting from the whole worksheet. So we're going to go to the home tab and then make sure it's you click on the conditional formatting drop arrow and then we can just clear rules go to the options here and click clear rules from entire sheet not the top one for selected cells so entire sheet there for the third task in this project we're going to throw some shade just like i did in my intro this one is particularly tough if you don't know what your table options are. Let's say the question asks you to apply formatting to every other column or apply formatting to every other row. The easy mistake there could be you just start doing that manually. So it's if you were asked to apply formatting to every other row, you might go, okay, well, I'll start on this first one and then I'll go to the third one and I'll apply formatting there. Don't do that. Table options will save your life on this one. So if you have to format every other row or format every other column, there's a way to do that with banded rows, banded column options in the table design tab. So just in case you weren't aware of that, I wasn't a few years ago when I was asked a question like that, I actually started formatting every other row and I lost a lot of time on my test. Uh, you don't want to do that. Instead, go to the table design tab. And then what you want to do if you're asked to shade every other row, throw some shade on those rows, I uh, click the banded row option. And there we go. So every other row is shaded now for a multi-sort type of question. So we're gonna sort multiple columns. It could be two, it could be three, it could be four or five as well. So uh, somebody asked this question, it was a really great question and kind of like to address it here. Could that sort be done using the small square arrows at the top of each column as well? Yeah, so that's, it. that's an interesting question. I find that people ask these types of questions if you're using G metrics to train because G metrics is very fickle. Like it'll only allow one way of doing something. So if I show something and I have a certain way that I prefer doing it and you have a different way, we would both be right on a CERTIPORT exam. One of us might be wrong on a G-Metrics exam, but on a CERTIPORT exam, you're safer than your G-Metrics exam. CERTIPORT allows for multiple outcomes. They didn't used to, but I think since the 2016 versions of those exams, they do allow for multiple ways to get the same outcome. So to answer the question, yes, you could do it this way, where you, if you asked to sort multiple columns, you could open up a few dialog boxes and then sort them, um, sort this way. But the only problem with that is I just, I like the one-stop shop option here because it's a timed exam. So you, if, for me, this is just quicker. So this is the way I prefer, but if you prefer that way, that's fine too. Uh, as long as you don't kind of, there's a way to sort columns with the arrows where you can undo the last sort. So you have to be careful not to do that with that option. Again, that's why I also just prefer to go to the data tab and click sort. Okay, so now that you've got that dialog box open, the first thing we want to do, and there's a little bit of a twist with this one. So we're going to sort by the delivered to column. You'll notice there's, this could be a little bit challenging though. So delivered to, there's two ways you could handle this and I'm going to show you both. So delivered to column. What if we want to sort the city of Toronto ones before the city of Ottawa uh, ones? So you couldn't do A to Z. Technically, you could do Z to A, like reverse alphabetical order. But if you want to, let's say if there's like specific cities that you want to pick and they're not in alphabetical order, but you want them in a certain order. Maybe if your company visits Toronto more, maybe they visit, you know, three other places. It's not like a specific alphabetical or reverse alphabetical order. You could do this where you do a custom list. Now, custom list you would normally use for months because obviously you don't put months and dates of the week in alphabetical order. That would mess everything up. But you could also do this where you do like a new list and then just type Toronto. So then we click 
Okay, and there. It's just kind of a custom list. Now we're gonna add the second column that we wanna sort by. So it's gonna give priority to this column. It's gonna sort everything in Toronto first and then Ottawa. And then after that, we're gonna sort the orders. So just the orders alphabetically. Okay, order amount. So I'll use that one just to throw another, because order amount can't be alphabetical order, but alphabetical order meaning A to Z is smallest to largest. So if you want your smaller numbers at the top of the table, you do smallest to largest. If you want them to go from largest to smallest and your larger numbers would be at the top, you could choose that option too. But if it's A to Z or smallest to largest, you choose that, press OK. And there we go. See all of our uh, Toronto locations are chosen first and then the order amount from smallest to largest within those cities. Our next task is going to ask us to find out the max function or the highest value in a certain range. So if we go to the order totals, we're going to, in this cell, we're going to try to find out what is the highest net amount that was made in our, uh, in our invoices. So we'll type equal max. So this is really good for if you're a teacher like me. Um, I always try to find the maximum score and the minimum if I have a huge class. And uh, sometimes if I'm comparing my sections, um, I'll look for the highest mark and look for the lowest mark. And then that way you get a gauge of like, um, a range of how your test went for the, the highest scoring student and the lowest scoring student. So min would be lowest, maximum would be highest. So we want to find the highest one. And if you want a little trick here, as long as there's no blank spaces, I think I showed this in the last uh, project, but if you're doing a formula like this and they want you to get, there's a few ways you could do this. You could do H to H, H colon H, which would get all of the values in a certain range. So you could do H, colon H, and it would just search the whole column for the highest. That's a great option if you want to add some values later because it'll still calculate the highest. So if you have new entries, that is a great option. So H colon H to select the whole column. There's another little trick too that I showed in the last project. You can also do this, press the first one, control shift and down. But I'll say that with caution because if you've left any cells blank, it just goes to the, the nearest blank cell. So you could do control shift down, which highlights cells A2 to H125. And again, two different ways to do it. If it's a CERT report exam, you're not gonna get, you'll lose marks for it. On a G-metrics exam, absolutely, you gotta pick, you gotta pick the G-metrics way. So uh, figure out the G-metrics way and then do it. So, so either way, this would be correct because it comes to the final solution, which would be 8,623, and you use the max function to do it. So both would get you full marks on that type of task. Okay, our very last task in this project is to remove duplicates. And like I just said before, and I've said earlier in this project, if you have a certain way of doing it and it's different than mine, then by all means. But the little trick here that you could be asked is remove duplicates, but only from one column. So it's it's pretty standard to remove duplicates from like the whole table or a structure range, but you might be asked to just remove the duplicates from one column. And this is how you would do that. So just click somewhere inside of this table in the data tab you see this big remove duplicates icon right here. Okay, so click remove duplicates. Now, the default is just remove duplicates from a whole row. So it would look through the whole row and make sure there's no duplicates, but you might be asked to just remove the duplicates from the invoice number. Okay, so we'll just say unselect all, just click the invoice number column, press okay. And none were found. You should see like two or three removed. That, that was a bad example. I should have thrown in some copies, but I also should have shown you the if function in this project because it's the most challenging function you'll see on any Excel exam. But luckily I've got a whole video on that. If you want to master the if function, go check out the video on your screen. I'll see you over there and I'll see you next week. I'll have project three ready. See you over there. Bye for now.